All right, so this uh, lesson is going to be on kinematics equations, and um, it's really where you sort of take a leap from physics 10 in like science 10, when really you're only dealing with um, the constant velocity uh, v equals dt. So, or pardon me, d equals vt. In kinematics equations, you're going to now in, uh, involve acceleration. Okay, so we're going to be dealing with accelerating objects in the kinematics equations. Because if you have constant velocity, if you have constant velocity, you're just going to use um, v e pardon me, I don't know why I keep doing that, d equals vt. Okay, so this is if you have a constant velocity. So the kinematics equations take into account the fact that uh, the distance formula is not linear. Okay? For constant velocity, distance is linear. These kinematics equations we're going to do today, okay, they, they take into account acceleration and the fact that in those cases, distance will be nonlinear. Okay, so f all you have to do uh, to begin this lesson is draw a linear VT graph. And we can start it at, we'll start it at rest. Okay, so we are going to look at a VT graph. The graph is the VT graph is linear, growing to the right. Okay, this tells us that our velocity is changing. This tells us that we have acceleration. We're going to mark two points on there. I'll zoom in for you. We're going to mark two points on the line, and we will call this VI, and we'll call this VF. These are velocities. I'm going to just be ignoring the bars above because it just it takes forever to write them. It just becomes annoying, so I'm just going to ignore the bars. So for velocity initial, you'll have some initial time. And for velocity final, you'll have some time final. Okay, so we got V on the y-axis t on the x-axis. And we know from yesterday and previous days that the acceleration is going to be the slope of this line. The slope formula involves delta v over delta t. So vf minus vi over tf minus ti. Now tf minus ti is just the time it takes for this velocity to change. So we just typically call that T, and you arrive at your first kinematics, thank you, first kinematics formula, which will be on your formula sheet. A equals delta V over T, okay, which will just be V final minus V initial over time. Okay, so put a box around this formula and put a number 1 beside it. It is kinematics equation 1. So often you'll be given, you know, the initial and the final velocities over some time and they'll just say, you know, what was the acceleration? Or this might be like a preliminary step for something that follows. Okay, so this is a very, very uh, important formula and it's going to be the first formula for kinematics. Okay, so naturally, if we are thinking about our kinematics equations, here we have A, V, and T. What's missing from this formula? What don't we have that you would typically want? Yeah, you'd want displacement. So we know that uh, from a graph of a VT graph, how would we calculate the displacement? Not the slope, but the... How to calculate displacement from a VT graph, you guys? 
Not slope, but area. Good. So you can only do two things with graphs. You can find the slope or you can find the area. Okay, keep that in your minds. Okay. So let's take a portion of this, you know, hypothetical velocity graph and call this again T1. Over here will be some time two. Okay, and if we want to find, I'll zoom in for you, if we want to find the displacement, we will have to find the area. Okay, so you're looking for, let me use change color pen, you're looking for this, this area. So that shape, trapezoid, area equals one half base, and then it's the two heights, height one plus height two. This is just an area of a trapezoid formula, okay, which, you know, it would be on some mathematical formula sheet. The area is the displacement, we know that. Now the base, the base of this trapezoid is from time one to time two, which in the previous example, what do we call that? We just called that t. That's the time it takes for the velocity to change. And these heights, what are these heights? Height one is the initial velocity at time initial. And what's the second height? Final velocity. And if, you know, you just have to s scan across to the y-axis and you would get those heights. Okay, so this would be vi plus vf. And then on your formula sheet, it just looks a little bit different. It goes vi plus vf over 2, like this. And then times, times t. That was, that's what it will look like on your formula sheet. Okay, and this will be your second kinematics equation. So you can put this box around it and put a two beside it or whatever. This is the second one. Second kinematics equation. Cool on this? Okay, let's jump into the third. Okay, so before we jump in, do you remember when we were finding areas, rather than doing the area of a trapezoid, we could do the area of a rectangle and a triangle? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do the exact same thing, but just a different way. So the exact same thing. It's hot in here, hey? Okay, so we're just going to draw another VT graph. We're going to do the same stuff with this VI and this VF. Okay, but this time we're going to chunk this area into two. Okay, we'll call this area one and we'll call this area two. Okay. So we know that our displacement will just be area one plus area 2. And you guys agree with that, right? Displacement is the area under a VT curve. 
So if we could just find those areas, we would have the displacement. Okay, the first shape is a triangle. So let's just do that down here. What is A1? If it was a triangle, it would be 1 half times base times height. Again, we are looking at substituting in base and height with our graph. So the base is the x-axis. If you look up at the screen, this is the base of the triangle. It is the length of time from time initial to time final. So that's just delta t or t. We just call it t. So it's 1 half times t times h. So all we need to do is look at h. What is the height of this triangle? How to find this height? Good, Elgin. Vf minus vi. Because if you were to come across to the y-axis, this would be Vf. This would be Vi. And you would be looking for this distance here from Vf to Vi, which is a simple subtraction. Okay, let's work with this. What is Vf minus Vi? What do we call that? Very nice, Aldrin. This is just a change in velocity. The final velocity minus the initial velocity is your delta V. All right, let's go back a page. You can just watch. Right here in kinematics equation 1, we actually have a formula for delta V. What would the formula be for delta V? You would have to cross multiply, sort of ignore this for now. This T would come up. How would you solve for delta V? You would have this. Okay. We are going to sub that in on our next page here. So delta V equals AT, because we cross multiplied. We are going to sub this into our area formula that we have going here. So 1 half T AT, which is 1 half AT squared. And there's area 1. Area 1 is a half a t squared. And you're going to get used to that term because it pops up in the kinematics equations quite frequently. Okay, the 1 half a t squared. And if you remember, displacement depends on time. And if you're accelerating, it's curved, and it will be a quadratic curve of degree 2 polynomial, t squared. That's where it's coming from. And area 2 is a lot easier. It's just a rectangle, right? Area 2 will be length times width. So let's take a look at the length and width of this area 2. So the width or whatever you want to call it, the length. The horizontal is t, and the vertical is, what's this amount? V what? Vi. So this length times width is just Vi t. Vi times t. Okay, now what we can do is substitute for area 1 here and substitute for area 2 which is this over here. We're going to substitute those in and we have our third kinematics equation. Okay, I'm just going to put area 2 substitution in first 
because that's what it looks like on your formula sheet. So it goes VIT plus one half AT square. And this is your third kinematics equation. We have two more to go. So that's your third kinematics equation. Next page. All right, so we're going to start with our acceleration formula. And we're going to do some algebra to create a new formula. Okay? So what we're going to do is isolate for VI. And through this process, hopefully you're getting used to some of the algebra that's expected for physics 20. So if we want to isolate for VI, we have to first get rid of VF and T. So which one goes first, the VF or the T? Good. So you cross multiply that T out of there. And I s see sometimes I see kids moving terms across without changing its position. You see T is in the bottom on the right. It needs to go on the top on the left. Okay, so... AT equals VF minus VI. And now how to s isolate for VI? I would put the VI on the other side. Why? Good. You want it positive. That means the AT's got to move. So bring the AT to the other side. And it becomes negative. So VI flips over and AT flips over and you switch the sign. That kind of algebra has to be you know, in your back pocket. Like You've got to be able to do that no problem in this course. Okay, now we're going to take this value for VI and we're going to sub it into this formula that we have. D equals VF plus VI over 2 times t. We're going to sub it into that one. That was our first kinematics equation. Okay, this is our first kinematics equation. We are going to sub in this value for vi, and what that will allow us to have is a formula that involves the final velocity only. Because if you look at kinematics equation 3, that formula depends on the initial velocity, this formula that we're going to de develop depends on the final velocity. Or it uses the final velocity rather than depends. It uses. Okay? So we have to, I'll highlight it to help you with the substitution. All this business here is equal to VI, so we've got to put it right here. So we'll have VF plus the stuff highlighted in, in purple there. VF minus AT. And this is all over 2 times T. So just a substitution. Now we have to clean it up. You see two VFs. So we have two VFs minus AT all divided by 2 and then multiplied by T on the outside. So we can clean up the inside a bit. 2VF over 2 minus AT over 2 times T. Understanding that you can split the numerator as long as you still have the divisor in there. So that whole numerator is being divided by 2. All we did was split the numerator. VF plus VF is 2VF. Now you'll notice in the first term the 2 will cancel. And we are going to multiply the T in. 
and I'll change color for that distribution and that cancel. So two cancels and we're going to scale in this T distributing. Okay, so we'll have VF minus AT squared over 2. And I'll just write it over here. This is what will show up on your formula sheet. I forgot a T in there, distributing the T. So we have VFT minus 1 half AT squared. And it looks very similar to kinematics equation 3. The only difference is this one uses VF. Whoops, that should say 4. Kinematics equation 4. Th equation 4 and equation 3 are very similar. Equation 3 uses VI and has a plus, whereas equation 4 uses VF and has a minus. Okay, this formula is not in your workbook for some reason. I'm not sure why. It's not in your physics 20 uh, workbook, but it's, you can use it. You can totally use it, okay? So you can put a little note there, not in workbook, not in workbook. Okay, but it's definitely allowable. You're allowed to use it. It's on your formula sheet. Okay, we just got one more to go, and then I'll show you a chart in your textbook that I'd like you to look at. So we've got one more thing with algebra. So again, we will start with our standard acceleration formula. We'll start here, and this time we're going to isolate for T. So how would I isolate for T? What can A and T do? No problem. Swap. Good word. Okay. So we can say T is equal to VF minus VI over A. Okay. Now, just like we did on the previous page, we're going to use our displacement formula that we developed in equation 2. So initial plus final velocities over 2 times t. So now what we can do is sub in our formula for t. And what that will allow us to do, let me highlight this, here's t, all this business, is going to go right here. When we sub in for t, this formula called kinematics equation 5, it's going to be independent of time. You don't even need the time to figure out the displacement. So it's actually pretty powerful. So we'll sub in this VF minus VI over A, where it says T. And I really love this kind of algebra. This is the stuff I was uh, really good at, and I was able to do quite well in university because of my algebra. So, you know, some of you might be looking at this lesson and think that may be boring or whatever, but... I love it, so tough bananas. Now, some of you who are strong in math, what do you see VI plus VF, VF minus VI? It's very similar to something in polynomials, math 10. Oh, Hamza, that was amazing that you saw that so fast. Yeah, you have a difference of two squares. Okay, so I'll just put this on, on the side here. You guys recall difference of squares, X plus Y, X minus Y? what would that multiply to? The difference of two squares, right? x squared minus y squared. Pretty cool formula. Actually, my nine-year-old was able to use this formula the other day, on like spontaneously. It was so amazing. I asked him, uh, I tried to stump him with 13 times 11, because you know, he's a youngster, he's doing his times tables. I tried to stump him 13 times 11, and in like one second, he yelled out at me 143. So obviously he didn't have that memorized, but how did he do that so fast? Well, what's 12 times 12? 144. He had, 
he had that one memorized. 144 minus 1 is 143. So this would be 13 and 11. Um, yeah, 13, no, no. 12 plus 1 and then 12 minus 1. So 13 times 11. And you, that works for all your squares. So like what's 4 times 6? 25 minus 1, right? 5 times 5 minus 1. That's what this, yeah. So it's pretty cool stuff. So I don't know how he did it, how he knew that. He was able to like spot a pattern in the multiplication chart. Anyways, let's keep going with this. So the numerator there is our difference of squares, and I'll highlight it for you. Just the numerator is a difference of squares. And I'm forgetting something. What did I forget? I forgot to put an A down here. That, sh that 2 should be an A. That's a, yeah. Just this formula here being put in there. The tops is your difference of squares. So we have VF square minus VI square all over 2A. And we're almost done. We're almost there. I'm just going to drop this uh, displacement term down here. Cross multiply the 2A so we don't have any nasty denominator there. So it's 2AD over there. And this is our formula. And typically on the formula sheet, it starts with uh, VF squared. So we'll just bring that VI over. Sorry, there's a square up there. Difference of squares. The 2A comes up. We have a difference of squares here. And we're going to move the VI term over. So it's VI squared plus 2AD equals VF squared. Okay, and I'll just write it one more time over here. This is what it will look like on your formula sheet. So pretty cool because it's independent of time. That's your fifth kinematics equation. So that's it for the notes, except maybe you just want to put in your notes to find this page in your textbook. And I'll just give you guys another 20 or 30 seconds to copy. And I'll show you where in your textbook there's a nice little chart that explains how to use the kinematics equations. So whenever you guys are done copying, anybody still going? A couple? I thought that was a lead pencil. <laughs> Are we good? Okay, I'll minimize this screen. I'll put up the textbook page for you. This is the chart. It's on uh, page 53. So please just put a note in your notes, page 53 of your textbook for when you're studying. Okay, page 53 of your textbook. And this chart tells you when to use which equation. I know sometimes that's the hardest part. Like, just tell me which equation to use, and then I can run with it. Okay. So you notice how this chart has the x's. It tells you um, what you'll need in order to solve. Obviously, for A, V, F, V, I, and T, there's four things. So there's four x's. So how many of those x's do you need of the four to solve for any other one? You always have to have one less. Okay, so if, if you need four terms, you have to have three of them. Okay, so if you wanted VI and you had A, V, F, and T, you could do it. Okay, look at kinematics equation two, independent of acceleration. So you don't need acceleration to work on this formula. Okay, so you would need to know four, you would need to know three of those four, and so on. The third one is independent of V final, but you would need to know three of those other four to use this one. The fourth kinematics equation, independent of V initial, so you need to know three of those four. And the last one, which I use a ton, because it's independent of time, you don't need the time, so you would just need three of those four to solve that one. 
Now, over on this physics little insight here, this is something that, uh, you know, students really struggle with if they don't study. Because it's like, well, it doesn't tell me what the initial velocity is. Or it doesn't tell me what the final velocity is. But in the language of the problem, it does. It might say that an object starts from rest. Or, for example, free fall. A free fall of a pen in my hand, I drop it. The initial velocity is zero. So that is something you need to know for free fall, that VI is zero. Okay? Or, like if it's a car stopping and it's saying, well, how long does it take for a car to stop? you would have to assume that VF is zero. And these are some things you need to be aware of. Okay, and the last one is if the object is in uniform motion, okay, there is no acceleration. Okay. Cool? That's it. Let's do some word problems. Now, these word problems are the ones I'll show you all are, are already done in your book, so I'm going to guide you through the solutions and show you what they did. So into your workbook, it's 2.2 right off the beginning. So it's page 38 of your workbook. Page 38. It has these bouncing balls. So into your workbook. Okay, so as you're getting set up, I will read this to you. It says a ball is dropped and hits the floor at a speed of 4.1 meters per second. The ball compresses and then reforms to spring upwards from the floor at 3.8 meters per second. So it's, there's some loss of energy when it hits the ground and your speed has decreased. So if your speed has changed, some acceleration must have occurred. Speed change, acceleration has occurred. So it says that the time the ball has made contact is 0.11 seconds, so that's the time of contact calculate the acceleration while it is in contact with the floor. Now in physics it's very valuable to draw a picture, always, 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 because it gives you sort of a visual of what's happening. Now when the ball is dropped, the vector for velocity will be pointing down. Right Fred? Alright, when the ball makes contact, it's now going up, so the velocity vector is now pointing up. And s this is something you have to take care of in your mind. You can't just start plugging into your formulas without knowing that this velocity vector on the initial is negative. It is down. We are doing one-dimensional kinematics. That's the title of this section, one-dimensional kinematics. It's a line. It can be vertical, it can be horizontal. You only have two directions you need to be aware of, positive and minus. So you need to always be thinking about that. Okay? The positive and minus can be whatever you want. You know, up can be negative if you really felt like it. Down can be positive if you really felt like it. Okay? but you just need to know that there's going to be some that are positive and some that are negative. If they oppose directions, they have to have different signs. Now typically down is negative, which you can see they're using 4.1 will be negative and the 3.8 will be positive. Okay, so what do we know? We know V final, we know V initial, and we know the time. There's a formula that spits that out immediately. It's right here. Okay, that's kinematics equation one. That's the first equation. Do you guys agree that that's the first equation? Yeah. All right. So this formula dictates a subtraction, right? It's the slope formula. Now look at what happened. VF was on its way up, so it's positive. And VI was on its way down, so it's negative. 
the negative in between, the subtract, has to be there. So you end up getting a negative negative, which is a positive. That kind of stuff really throws off kids at the beginning of doing physics for the first time. It's like, what? Because these are vectors and they have direction. You have to be aware of that. So with the plus plus, dividing the point one one, you get roughly 72 meters per second square. Because it's positive, the acceleration vector will be pointing upward. So if you are looking to calculate the ball's acceleration, you need to indicate a direction because accelerations are vectors. So if you were to do this question and just put 72, I would dock you marks. If you forgot the units, I would dock you marks as well. And if you had the wrong sig digs, I would dock you marks. Physics is about detail, it's about care, and it's about attention. You have to mind your details in physics. Okay, let's take a look at number two. A rock is dropped. Right beside this ball question, can you please just put the word free fall? That's a very typical type of question for Physics 20. You could just memorize, especially these first two questions, you memorize these two. That will help you. So for a free fall question, like when Fred is standing at the edge of the cliff throwing his physics homework off the edge of the cliff, well, he doesn't throw it. He drops it. If he throws it down, this is not free fall. Okay? Or this is a different style. It is free fall, but this idea where VI is cancelled out for zero, that's if you just drop something. Okay, these are dropping questions where VI will be zero. Okay? So, oh, those are projectiles. We'll, we talk about projectiles in a, probably a few weeks. We've got to build to it. But yeah, it's similar stuff. All right, so let's look at what we have. A rock is dropped. Right there, you can put this down. Um, in high school, lots of uh, people will tell you to like, you know, initialize your variables. Like, what are the variables we're working with? It sort of helps you stay organized. So if you see rock is dropped, or a ball is dropped, or object is dropped, initially, velocity is zero. Right away, they give us a time. So we can jot that down. And then it says calculate the height, which is the distance. Okay. And it says to ignore the air resistance. That will always be the case. Neglecting air resistance is always th the case. So because this formula doesn't give you a final velocity, you have to use this one. It gives you a time. You want displacement, so you need you need a formula with D in it, and because VIT is zero, this whole term disappears because it's zero times the time. Zero times anything is zero, so you just have D equals a half AT square. Pump in your A, which is what? If it's free fall. Reyes, for a free fall question, what's the acceleration? We talked about this yesterday. What's the only thing uh, causing a ball to drop? Gravity. The acceleration due to gravity has a value of 9.81. Now, it's optional here to put this negative, okay? Sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. It just indicates direction, okay? So you might be like, well, why is there no negative there? Okay? So, you know, it's almost like up to the user. Just be mindful that, you know, it's still going to be 44, whether it's up or down. And in fact, this one's just asking for distance, so you don't need the negative. You pop it in the calculator, boom, you'll have it. And of course, look at the sig digs. Why only two sig digs in my answer? Why did they do that? I see three sig digs here. No, th I think this book should have 44.7. I see three sig digs. Yeah. I think it might be just a mistake. OK, 
Okay, so there should be three sig digs on this answer, not two. All right, next one. A baseball pitcher throwing a fastball at a speed of 30 meters per second. During the throwing motion, the pitcher accelerates the ball three and a half meters, starting from when his arm is extended behind his body to the point where the ball is released when his arm is fully extended in front. Calculate the magnitude of the average acceleration of the ball during the throwing motion. Okay, so when you launch the ball, this is your VF. Initially, the ball has no speed. You have it in your hand, it's back here, and you put a whole bunch of work into this and energy and <laughs> throw it. And you go from zero speed to this 30 meters per second. And we can jot that in on the side here. VF is 30. And the displacement they gave us was 3.5 meters. Okay. Did they give us any time? They didn't give us a time. Okay. So the one formula that doesn't have time, right here. The VF square, VI square, and 2AD. It has the A, which we need to solve for. And we know that the initial velocity is zero. Because the ball's not moving until you throw it. Okay. Now what this book does is it isolates the variables first and then plugs in the numbers. It is okay if you guys want to plug in the numbers and then do algebra on the numbers instead of the letters. Either is fine. Okay? So this whole term goes away because 0 squared is 0. And then to isolate for the A, you just need to divide out 2 and D. So over here is 2D like this. So A is just VF squared over 2D. Plug in what you got. Boom, boom, boom. And notice that we have three sig digs with appropriate units. Let's check our question. I see three sig digs. I see three sig digs. Okay, it's asking for acceleration, so I put on meters per second square. Okay, so don't forget your units and don't forget sig digs. Now number four is a very challenging question. Okay, it says a helicopter is rising upwards with the speed of eight meters per second when a wrench falls out of the door. Okay, so I'll try to imagine that. Flying up in the air at a constant speed, eight meters per second, and then you, oh, the wrench just falls out. It's not thrown down or anything, it just falls out. Okay? So the wrench has the same initial velocity as the helicopter. So the wrench to an observer actually is going up and then falls. Okay? The helicopter continues to rise. Please pay attention on this one. Mr. Catan, you with us? All right. All right. Helicopter continues to rise. The wrench continues to rise, but what's happening to the wrench? slowing down due to acceleration of gravity it's going to go up for a little bit and then fall to the earth okay if you look at the very first part of the solution what formula are they using just the standard DTV one why are they allowed to use that because this is constant so put a little note on there it's rising upwards with a speed of 8 meters per second. Okay. So isolating for D, D equals VT, 8 meters per second for 3.1 seconds. The helicopter has a dis distance traveled of 24.8 meters.
Now for the wrench. So this is the helicopter. And this is the wrench. Now the wrench will not be experiencing a constant velocity like the helicopter. The helicopter is just moving at a constant speed, but the wrench is not. The wrench is under the influence of gravity. The wrench has an initial speed from the helicopter. It used to have that. It's now free of the helicopter, and it's now by itself in free fall. So you have VIT plus one half AT square because you know gravity. Okay, you know the acceleration of gravity, and because this is a displacement question, you're going to have, I put a negative in there. And that's hard at first for students to understand. <coughs> They're opposing this, one's going up, the other's going down, we need to find their separation. Now, I would keep uh, a negative on there uh, most of the time. It's only like really simple ones where you can then get away with it. So keep a negative on that A. Okay. So you have your VIT. That's right here. And then you have this half AT square, which is here. The negative is crucial. So you're solving for this displacement. And when you finish off the calculations, you have this 24, negative 47, it ends up being negative 22. What does that mean? So again, one-dimensional kinematics with like a zero reference point. Here's zero. This is where the wrench fell out. Okay? It went up for a bit, and then it started to fall. And after 3.1 seconds, it ended up at negative 22.337. So that formula will spit out displacement. Okay? And your acceleration vector for gravity is down. So put the negative on there. This displacement formula is perfect. Okay? You end up getting this uh, negative 22. Keep in mind that at the same time, the helicopter is just cruising up here like this at a constant V. So now the helicopter is, you know, from the reference point. The reference point is when the wrench fell. It's got a plus 24.8 up from this reference point. While the wrench, after 3.1 seconds, is down here. So to calculate the total amount of separation, which is what they're looking for, the distance between the wrench and the helicopter after 3.1, you need to add 24.8 and 22.37, and you get this 47. That is a very challenging kinematics equation, okay? So this is what you'd work to to try to get honors in this course, this kind of style. This is a very difficult question. The other ones above, those three, okay, those are like uh, acceptable standards. Okay, this is for the student that really wants to push himself or herself in physics. Because it's multifaceted. Um, you got vectors involved. But keep in mind, it's only one dimensional. We are going to be doing two dimensional stuff later. Okay, so that's it for me. You got some problems to work on over the weekend. Um, I would go to 15. <coughs> yeah, that's not that sh that's not that much. Um, guys, before you start to speak. Just a word on kinematics. Um, when you want to go to physics 30, you really have to have a strong kinematics uh, understanding. And the next unit after kinematics is dynamics. Kinematics and dynamics, you're actually going to repeat again when you get to f uh, physics in, in a post-secondary institution. So you do physics in high school, and then you're going to retake it all 
starting from scratch at, at your post-secondary if you take physics. Because they will teach it to you through uh, like calculus and they'll actually give you even more uh, in-depth stuff. Because the calculus is actually a lot easier through calculus. It's like derivatives and integrals and it's, it's way easier. And that's actually like, like I was telling you the story, like Newton was trying to explain his physics, so he developed calculus to explain his physics. On a farm by himself during the plague. By, yeah. Maybe there was some intervention, divine intervention. <laughs>